Hello everyone. Um, I am recording this live video uh, to show you all how to start with some knitting. Um, so I'm going to wait for a few people to join first of all. Um, hello, I see some people joining now. That's great. Um, so I'm going to cover the basics of knitting today and this video will be suitable for adults or kids and I just think it's a really a lovely way to pass some time. Um, I'm completely obsessed with knitting and crochet and all things fibre and I find that it really helps me after a stressful day just to switch off a little and um, relax with my knitting. Um, I see a few more people joining now so that's great. I'll give everybody a few minutes. Um, we'll just chat about tools first of all. So I think in the post um, that advertised this live, I was letting people know that I would recommend, I know these are 10 millimeter ones, nine, 10 millimeters, the chunkier the better. It's much, much easier, particularly because um, this video is tailored to children as well. So the chunkier the needles are, the chunkier your yarn art, the easier the process is going to be. Now, don't be put off if you are, um, learning for the first time and you're finding it really tricky, I would suggest that if you're really struggling with it to have a look at some finger knitting videos. You'll find loads of those on YouTube, but I will try and tag um, a video that I did back in, I think March, April time, um, where I demonstrated finger knitting and that's a, a lovely way to start if um, this just is not for you or it's not working. This isn't designed to stress people out. It's supposed to be a little bit of fun and hopefully a bit of um, enjoyment for everybody. Um, this piece here, I have deliberately created some common mistakes. So we'll cover that at the, at the very end. And um, today I'm gonna talk through a very basic cast on and then also a long tail cast on. I can see quite a few people are joining. I can see a few people um, joining that can, that I know can knit already, so no pressure on me. First of all, is the sound okay and is the screen okay? Has everyone, anybody got any problems with that first of all? I don't think so. So there are loads of different ways that you can cast on and I know that when I learned to knit, I did definitely did not learn the cast on. Grandma would have done that for me. And I'm sure a few people are the same. Once you get into the rhythm of the actual knit stitches, it's, the, you know, you're fine. You can definitely knit, but it's the cast on that sometimes people find quite hard. So I'm gonna show you a really simple one today. And then I'm gonna show you a long tail cast on as well, which is um, a little bit more beneficial uh, because what you can find with a normal cast on is just that it can sometimes be really tight and the edge can be really tight. This one was a long tail cast on so you can see it's got a bit of stretch and if you were doing say a hat or something you don't want that to be so tight that you can't squeeze the hat onto someone's head. Um, so to begin with we're going to start with a slip knot. So I'm going to make just a little loop um, and then we're taking the long tail, popping it through the loop and pulling it up. Now I'm going to do this a couple of times for you. But we basically want something that we can slide onto our needle and tighten up. So I'll show that again really quickly. Short tail like this, make a little loop and then you want this end, the end that's attached to the ball, to come up and under it and if you like you can bring this end and this tail together and just pinch that and then you just pull up and that's you created a slip knot. I'll pop it onto my needle. Now I am using um, circular needles which means that they've got this little plastic bit. If you have these instead, just long traditional kind of needles, that's absolutely fine. You can do exactly the same thing um, that I'm going to show you today with long straight needles. The only reason that I teach with circular needles is that I find that you can do more with them. You can work in the round to create hats and things. And also 
Um, it's a nice skill to have because I don't think you get as much pressure on your joints um, when you're holding circular needles that you do with long. One of the things that I'm going to try and get across today is, is that there is no right or wrong. It's whatever you feel comfiest with. If when you were a child, you learned with long, straight needles and that's what you feel familiar with, go for it. You know, um, I just would suggest that if you're doing it for the first time, then these, I think, are far easier and they give you much more flexibility. So you'll see that my little tail here isn't really that long, maybe about 10 centimetres long. And I'm going to show you how to do a normal, kind of very straightforward cast on. So I'm going to use my right hand needle and I'm going into the stitch here, just from the front to the back, like that. So we've got them crossed over and then I'm going to take this yarn, wrap it around my needle and I will do this a few times, so don't worry. And we're pulling the needle back around to take the yarn through. And then we're going to give it a little twist and pop it back on the needle. Now, I know some of you will be going, what? Um, the reason that I'm teaching this one is, is that it's very um, similar to a regular knit stitch. So we're bringing this yarn round to the left. We're going to take it up and over the top of that needle. So you see it there? And then holding on to this yarn, I'm kind of, I've got it wrapped around my little finger just so that I'm creating a little bit of tension. I'm not pulling it too tight, just a little bit. And I've kind of got it held alongside this needle as I roll it around my left needle. And I pull it up and through. And then I'm going to take my left needle in like that and just tighten it up. Not too tight. Again, we want it to be nice and loose. I'm going to demonstrate this again quite a few times because we're going to cast on 15 stitches. Now, this is probably the point where people go, what do I do with it now? You can put it on like this. There's nothing wrong with that, but then you'll see it doesn't look very obvious where your needle goes next and I think that can cause some problems. So instead, I'll take that off, we'll start this one again. We wrap over the top of the needle, roll around like that and I'm kind of pulling, see how I'm pulling up a little bit of extra length so that the stitch isn't too tight. If you do it too tight it's going to be really difficult to prise them onto your needle. So we now we've got it nice and loose on the right. I'm going to take this left needle and slip it on like that. I know that we'll have all different abilities here. So apologies if you're like, no, I know how to do this and you've got to watch this. When I um, pop this video back on to uh, the Facebook page, I'll save it so that you can watch it back whenever. And what I will do is put some little time, a time guide on it so that you don't have to watch the whole thing and listen to me rabbiting on. You can just get to the nitty gritty of uh, what section you want it to be. So you can bypass this bit if you already know how to cast on. And I am going to cast on 15 stitches. What I will do today, as I carry on doing this, just shout if anybody's got any questions. I will try and answer them as I go. Um, but what I am going to try and do today is show you some knit stitches, some common mistakes that people can make. And then I'm going to show you, not that, it, not that it's essential, but I'm going to show you what a pattern would have told you to do. So it's much easier to learn this, I think, visually and watch someone else do it and have someone on hand to help you. But if you do want to um, progress and you want to start knitting patterns, then I want to show you some of the abbreviations so that you would feel comfortable giving it a go. And I'm going to recommend a couple of basic knitting patterns as well for you at the end. Um, Hopefully this video should only last about maybe half an hour, I think. 
and what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and do the same again um, next Friday afternoon so that we can carry on and we can um, fix any mistakes that we've got and then I'm going to show you how to do some purl stitches next week and um, also teach you how to stop your edges from rolling. So if anybody has knitted long kind of scarf like um, pieces of work before, you might notice that the edges start to curl in a little um, and it almost becomes like a tube. So next week I will show you how to avoid doing that as well. I've got Caroline saying she thinks she's got it. Lovely. Um, yeah, so size of needles, I would always suggest the chunkier the better to get going. This is a super chunky yarn. This is um, Stylecraft XL and I'm using a 10 millimeter needle, I think, today, only because I sold out of all the nines. Um, nine millimeter, I think, was what I recommended and that's the size that I would suggest for the patterns that I'm going to suggest at the end. Um, but if you had for example, these four millimeter ones, the thinner your needles, the thinner your yarn should be. So um, this uh, Life Double Knit, which is probably like the most readily available yarn, you'll see this in, in other shops as well. Um, I, I only stock this one, the Stylecraft Life Double Knit. Um, but it, you'll see on the back of um, a ball of yarn that it will show you, I don't know if you can focus on that, but it'll tell you exactly what needle is recommended for this one. Um, so it's a four millimeter needle. Um, lots of different yarn types out there. Um, just work with what you've got. Um, and I wanted to show you as well. So this is what I usually produce. This is my hand dyed yarn. Um, and I love it because you can just have so much fun with the different speckles and it just adds a lot of interest to your knitting as well. But let's just stick with something simple and um, these chunky needles to start with. So I'm going to count my stitches. Four, five, six, eight, 12, 13, 14, 15. I've got one too many. So I'm just going to drop that one off the needle and pull. So we know we've got 15 stitches cast on now. I will demonstrate the long tail cast on as well at the end of this, but we're just going to get going and we are going to knit um, the stitches just like we did before with the cast on. So we're bringing our yarn over the top, rolling it around the needle. And when we get to this stage, rather than the pulling up and popping it onto that needle, we're just going to slip that one off. So in, over, through, and off. So one of the things that I think, um, one of the stumbling blocks is, it's this point. It's when you pull your needle through and you go, oh, I've dropped my yarn. So in order to avoid that, it helps if you hold the tail against this needle and what that's doing is it's just pulling, so if you can see here, I hope this is focused um, enough for the video, but if you see here, I'm holding this like that and that's stopping it from slipping off the needle that way because I'm pulling it back. And with practice, you'll get to know whether this is too tight or if that's too loose, you know, that will just come with practice. Um, one other thing that I like to do is this tip here. I am going to roll it around. So these needles are actually touching right now and I'm going to keep them touching all the way. So they're still, I've still got contact and I'm kind of rolling this needle around so it's still touching it. And that way the yarn can't then slip off this point. I hope that makes sense. That was the bit that, so my daughter's seven and she's just started knitting and that was the bit that we struggled with a fair bit to begin with. So we roll it around and then slip it off. Roll it around and slip it off. I'm going to continue to finish this row and then what I want to show you is um, and I don't want to overwhelm everyone with too many different techniques but what I want to 
get across to you is that you need to try lots of different ways until it suits your style. So when I was little and I learned how to knit, my grandma would always say to me, you're a bapit knitter. And that just means awkward if you're not from around here. But I was really awkward. And although I am right handed, I do a lot with my left hand. And it wasn't until I tried continental knitting, um, probably about three or four years ago, maybe longer, um, that it suddenly clicked for me. So I find that process quite awkward, um, but it's the easiest way to teach. So this is a standard kind of UK traditional throwing method. So we always throw the yarn around the needle with our right, right hand. What I'm going to show you now, though, is continental knitting. And the, the stitch is exactly the same, but I'm using my left hand instead to control this yarn. So we've knit to the end of the row. And you'll see that the stitches are kind of moving on to the cable a little bit. That's absolutely fine. What we're going to do, we're going to turn it around so that we've got these little bumps facing us now. Grab my needle and I'm going to show you. So if you were doing it just normally, you would just continue like that. Working around the needle, pulling it round and off. And we're just doing exactly the same thing. And I think this is why it's so kind of relaxing. You're just doing the same repeated stitch over and over again until you want to progress to a different pattern. But I'm going to show you how I like to knit. And this is the way that I've taught my daughter how to knit actually, because I think it's the easiest way. And it also means that you're not actually having to take your hand off of the needles. Um, what I do is again, with my left hand now, I wrap it around my little finger and I've kind of gripped it a little so that I've got a little bit of tension. And then I use this four finger to hold this nice and taut. This does take practice, particularly if you've been taught the traditional throwing method. So it does take time. But what we're doing, we're using our finger to wrap it around. So the yarn is going in exactly the same direction as it was when it was in my right hand. And I'm still rolling it around the needle and slipping off. But what you'll find is, is that you can do this much quicker. And you're in more control, I think. You've got your both hands on the needles at all times. You're not having to take them off to wrap around. Give it a try. Let me see how you get on. If this is not for you and you're like, what? Don't understand. Don't worry about it. Just go back to the regular way. But you can pick up a fair bit of speed um, this way. And... It's also handy for when you come to do, I'm being really ambitious here, when you come to do fair isle projects. So when you're doing colour work, it means that you can have one colour in one hand and one colour in the other. But we're not going to go into that today. We're just doing the very basics. Okay. Oh, Flo's saying I like that. That's good. Good. Hopefully... I can, you know, I, w I want to try and give people the skills that they can try lots of different things. Um, it's whatever you feel comfiest with. Does anyone have, this would be a good chance to kind of answer any questions. I've tried to keep up with the comments, but it's quite hard looking at the knitting and looking at the comments at the same time. And I know I'm kind of going quite fast now. But what I hope is that if I record this video and I save it, then you'll be able to kind of rewind and pause and watch things back again afterwards. Oh, I think everyone's got it. No questions. Maybe you're typing though. Maybe you're typing. Um... I've got no idea as well. You know, what I like about these lives is that you could be chatting to anyone anywhere in the world. And you can see now that it's starting to look a little bit like a knitted piece. 
Pamela, do you have any of these in sales? I'm all out of the nine millimeter ones, but I will be getting more next week. I've ordered them already, so I can give you a shout and announce on the website, on the Facebook page when I get them. Louise is saying that's Brill looks so much faster. It really is. Um, I was such a slow knitter and I crocheted a lot. Um, I was completely obsessed with crocheting and with crochet, you hold your yarn in your left hand. So as soon as someone showed me how to do this with knitting with my yarn in my left hand, it just felt like, oh, it's clicked. Yes, Annick, you'll be able to watch it back. I will um, save this video so that everyone can watch it back. And I'm going to try and put some times on it as well. So you can just fast forward to the bits that you do want to watch. Um, right, so I'm going to cover some common mistakes now. As I wobble the camera around. One of the things that I think people sometimes do is their yarn might not be in the right position when you come to knit the next stitch. So if I was, you, I mean, that might be very obvious to you and you're like, oh, I've done something wrong there. But what will happen is, is that you'll have a big gap between there. So that's one thing to bear in mind. So your yarn for a knit stitch should always be behind the work, not in front of you at all. Um, one of the other things I think is where maybe the yarn has gotten wrapped around that. Now that looks really like a knit stitch. Um, Eileen's saying, I recently tried circular needles, but turns out very slack. It could just be that you need some time just to practice with the tension. I think it's all in how you hold this section of yarn, to be honest. Um, it's with everything really, isn't it? That, um, it takes takes a little bit of time. So I now have my stitches here. And to be honest, these look um, fairly straightforward. They look like they're correct. But actually, we've got that extra yarn over here. And what that produces, if I pull down this one, it produces a big hole. So in a pattern, that is an actual technique. It's a yarn over and you will create an extra hole because when you come to knit that one, you've created like an extra loop and you'll get a holy bit. Now, I always say when you're beginning, when you're starting out, just keep going. Don't worry about it. Don't try and fix it. Just keep going because really all we're trying to do is get familiar with this knit stitch. However, if you're the type of person that likes things to be perfect, not saying anything, then you can take it back. Um, so you can drop down these stitches and pop them back onto the needle again. You don't need to um, worry about dropping down these stitches. So you can either, and some people might go, oh! and this is another reason why chunky yarn and big needles is a good idea. So I know that my hole is about here. So I'm going to slide these off. And quite gently, I'm not going to do it too hard. I'm just pulling the yarn out like that. And then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going in from behind. Don't worry too much. If you want to pick it up from the front, that's fine. But if you go in from behind, then your stitches will be in the right direction. And my yarn is behind this time. And I'm going to continue now. I've switched back to using my right hand just to finish this. Okay. So that's that one fixed. One of the other problems, and I think, I don't know if I can find it in here, is when you get a dropped stitch. Yeah, it's down here. So there's a little hole here and I've dropped this stitch. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how you can fix this. So if it's miles down your knitting and um, and you don't want to attempt this, that's fine. You can just darn it in with a bit of yarn at the end. 
um, what I would suggest is pop a little safety pin in it to stop it from unraveling any further because it will create a ladder. Um, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip across my stitches. So this is another technique in a pattern that will often tell you to slip stitches. So when you're slipping a stitch, all you're doing is lifting up this stitch from right to left like that. I think that's probably one too far, yeah. So I'll pop that one back on there. And what I'm going to do is get a crochet hook. And because I've done quite a few rows, usually you'll notice this maybe one or two rows um, before, so it's not as complicated. Um, but what you can do Sorry, I need to open this out a little. I'm popping my hook down and this probably isn't very clear. I'll go into this in a little bit more detail. Um, next week. Yeah, I think this is going to be too tight, to be honest. I'm probably just overwhelming everyone with, what's she doing? Yeah, I probably shouldn't have continued and knitted so many rows if I was going to demonstrate that. So I'm just going to leave that there and we will cover this in much more detail next week. Um, I just, I don't want to over complicate things. Um, if it, that's much easier to fix if you've only got one stitch drop. So let's do that just now. Let's slip some stitches. And then let's drop this one. So. I'm going to knit these stitches. Again, I've gone back to doing it with my right hand for just now, so I'll just stick with that just now. Knitted these first two. And three. And then I think, oh, where's this stitch come from? So I've spotted it. I'm going to pull it up so that I can see it a little bit clearer. And one of the problems that you can have is it, if you twist your stitch, so what you want to do is straighten it out so that you can see that that side of the stitch um, controls that yarn there and then that side is pulling up that yarn. See how you can see that pulling? If it was twisted you can see that little crisscross there and then that is the wrong way that your stitch should go on. It's not going to make a huge difference um, and to be honest I say just keep going. Try your best and we will do more problem solving, um, fixing mistakes next Friday at two. One of the other things that I see people do sometimes is knitting through the back of the stitch. Um, it's maybe not as common a problem, but see this strand here? That's our front loop of our stitch. And then we've got the other side of it, the back. And some people will knit through the back of there. And again, that creates a tighter um, crossed stitch. It's just going in the wrong direction. So we don't want ones like that. We want to go from front to back, wrap our yarn around and through. There's quite a few people on watching now. So is there anything else that you would like me to show you? I've just switched to my left hand for anybody that's just joined. Um, so this is continental knitting and this is what I would like people to give a, a try. Um, I think it's much easier. Um, so next week we will show the purl stitch as well. Purling is the opposite to knit and these knit stitches will create garter bumps. So this is a garter stitch here. Um, looking to see if I've got anything that's actually knit. I don't have anything to hand. But basically the um, knit stitch, the traditional kind of knit stitch where you get the V, that's created by alternating your rows between knit stitches and purl stitches. Um, so I'll demonstrate that next week too. And also the um, things that we can do to avoid our edges rolling. Um, I think I've probably covered 
just about everything. The other thing to um, say is that if this comes off completely, please just don't, don't worry about it. You don't have to start from the beginning again. Um, what to do is just slip the stitches back on. So I'm going from right to left here. I'm not going to worry about the way round my stitches are. So if you want to grab them like that, that's fine. We can sort them out at the end. Um, and you will, you'll get to see that, that um, the stitch doesn't look quite right on the needle with a little bit of practice. So I'm doing some through the front and some through the back. The back is the right way to do it. Oh, <laughs> spot my mistake. <laughs> I've got knitting on both sides now. I'll take this one off. And this one. Oh, my tail's at the wrong end. Great demonstration, Claire. Right, here we go. Up around. So we can see there that this front leg of the stitch is ever so slightly like to the right hand side of the back one. See how the back one is just to the left ever so slightly. You'll see what I mean in a minute when we come to one that hasn't been picked up correctly. I think I did them all correct for a while. So usually I teach these classes in the in the workshop. Yeah, so here we go. And there's nothing like being able to stand over someone's shoulders and be able to pick up and fix mistakes for people. And it just helps to build confidence. So it is quite hard to try and um, encourage and give that confidence from a video. But know that I make mistakes as well. Um, and it's not until you've practiced a fair bit that you can... Um, start to see that it looks wrong. So this one, it just doesn't feel right. Um, my needle isn't going into that stitch properly and it's because I picked it up in the wrong direction. So I'm going to twist it back round like that. I am doing a live video. Just reminding my husband who's just walked in. And then we're going to carry on knitting these stitches like this and then this one again this is in the wrong direction so we need to slip it off oh Melissa's asked what do you feel is best to learn first crochet or knitting doesn't matter either or you can do knitting or crochet um I like to do a little bit of both Oops. One thing that I would say about um, crochet stitches is, oops, sorry. One thing I would say about crochet stitches is that if you're watching any YouTube videos on it, a lot of them tend to be American and the crochet terminology is different to what it is in the UK. So there we go. I'm going to stop there because the tail that I cut off earlier on is really short. But hopefully that has giving you a bit of an insight into how to fix some problems. But I, I would just say, keep going. Um, don't worry about these holes until you gain um, enough knowledge and until your hands are almost like methodically just doing the, the action. Um, I wouldn't worry about fixing mistakes. And it's why I would suggest that we'll leave it a week. We can give it a practice and then we can try again um, when the actual knit stitch and the process of just going, you know, in, over, through and off repetitively is a little bit more natural. Um, hi, Gillian, you've just asked about what's a good project to start with. So just a scarf, simple scarf, just keep keep knitting. Um, I wouldn't do too many stitches because what I find with my daughter is, is that she gets bored halfway through. Um, so 15 is about you know it's it's okay for her and then we can turn and she's 
still interested. I've got a couple of um, patterns here that go with this yarn. So this is a hat pattern. Now, the actual stitches that I've used here um, are are different. This is kind of a, a, a moss stitch effect, so don't pay too much attention to that. That's just a different pattern technique that I've used for that. But this is the um, beanie hat, and this is the um, Stylecraft hat pattern. So you get four different, no, five different patterns with this one, and you could do something a little bit more straightforward with um, maybe just a, a knit and purl stitch, like a rib effect here. What do you do with the tail? Good question. So grab a needle at the end and then you kind of weave it in. So just in and out, in and out of a few stitches and then go back in the opposite direction. Um, if, you, if your tail is long enough, go back again and that should hide it in there. Um, flow just on a couple of rows with the continental style my tension is a lot tighter yeah you might find that you need to just kind of loosen everything off a wee bit when I first started knitting continental style I could only do the knit stitches I couldn't do purl so I would <laughs> and I really I don't want to confuse people but I would knit all my stitches with my left hand and then I would purl all my stitches with my right and my tension was all over the place um it looked terrible but keep with it um, and with practice, it will become a little bit more um, obvious. This is another really good um, beginner's project. I know the light's shining on it a lot. This one, for example, um, is just a long loop, um, a cowl. And I mean, it is it is probably for a for a beginner um, and a I don't want to put kids off, um, but I would say that this is probably a larger project that they may well lose interest with. What would be really nice if you just created little squares and then you could sew them together. I'm just thinking about maybe changing colours and stuff like that might keep them interested. Says the mum who's tried to get her kids involved in crafts. They lose interest so quickly. Um, uh, Melissa's asking, is the hat pattern? I've just shown a good beginner's project. It is. It's it's great. Um, what I would say is, is that this pattern is written for um, knitting the pieces flat. So you wouldn't necessarily have to have circular needles. You could do it on straight needles, just working back and forth. And then you sew up a seam, an imaginary seam that's here to join it in the round. However, I would say, you know, knitting in the round is probably a demonstration that I could do um, separately and it's really straightforward. Once you've got it sussed, um, it's really simple and it tends to be, I noticed someone else asked, do I always knit with circulars? Yeah, almost always. Um, I can knit flat pieces with them and I can knit in the round with them and I, um, I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to sewing in the ends quite often I'm wearing a jumper and the ends still aren't sewn in and by knitting something in one solid continuous piece means that I don't have as much seaming to do so purely lazy reasons and Melissa's asking if this is available on the website yeah there's a couple of these and I will get more um, I've got plenty of the cowl ones and then if you want to be really ambitious there's this um super chunky cardigan and I know that you know that it might be way off but it's a nice challenge to have isn't it to think oh I think I am I'm gonna work out and really this is all knit and purl stitches this one's is knitted flat um so you do have some seaming up to do some sewing up to do at the end but it's it's really doable um it's just um, one thing that I would say, like particularly when you're working with one solid colour, that you can get a little bit bored and fed up. Hence the reason why knitters have several projects on the go all at the same time. Um, Eileen saying, I was knitting hats in a circular needle, but they were very slack. Could it be the wrong size needle, i.e. length? Mm, it could be. It could just be a attention thing what can sometimes happen and I think we'll probably cover this in more detail in a knitting in the round video because I don't want to put off 
beginners at this stage. But what you can do if your cable, for example, say I was going to join this in the round, my cable is too long here. So what you can do is pull out between some stitches a little bit of excess cable. Now this is called the magic loop technique um, so that I can then join and knit that in the round and we're pulling out the excess. So yeah, you can get some slacker stitches between here. So the solution with this would be to use a needle with a shorter cable length. I think these ones are 40 centimetres, which is usually ideal for hats. Um, but yeah, I will cover that a little bit more in probably a, a specialised kind of knitting in the round and we can discuss other other things as well. So I aimed for half an hour and I've managed to rab it on for 40 minutes instead. So hopefully, thank you to those that are still with me. Um, and I hope that that's inspired you to try and um, pick up some knitting and give it a go. If you've got any questions at all, feel free to add them in the comments section um, when I save this video. So unfortunately, any of the comments that have been made during the video um, do get lost. So if I have missed something, I'm really sorry. Um, but ask me again and I will try and help you all. Um, I hope it's helped and give it a go and see how you get on. And I will be back here again next Friday, two o'clock. It's not like I've got anywhere else to go, is it? Um, and we will try and progress our techniques so that we can do some purl stitches, some fixing of mistakes. I'll try and do that a little bit clearer because that wasn't very clear earlier on today. And also some stitches at the sides that will help avoid your work from curling in. Um, so I'll leave to it. And have a lovely weekend, everyone. And I hope that that's cheered some people up. See you later. Bye.